Hey guys, let me give you a very crazy scenario, but it's actually true. And it happens a lot in magic where if you cheat, you win. And when you win, you can cheat even more. So when Alex Pacini wrote a, basically a quote, apology to the magic community on Facebook after he came back the second time. So he was banned two times, cheated thousands of times, and now wrote a apology letter which then he was banned like a month later. He mentioned that the reason he was cheating was the audience, me and you, wanted him to cheat because we would clap, we would support him, and we wouldn't call him out, at least initially, on cheating. And he's absolutely right. So here we have Paulo Victor Dama de Rosa, one of the most famous Magic players, making, quote, a mistake. Now, we have seen mistakes by Aaron Barberich. We've seen mistakes by Sebastian Wilbur. And this is only in the last few weeks. We've seen massive mistakes made by Jared Bartelli, Marcellus Carvajal, Yuri Watanabe made a big mistake. Owen made a big mistake, possibly. Uh, we still don't know very much about the Owen situation. But we've seen a lot of big mistakes being made all the time. And when I watched and when I read Ephrob's article about how he wants to shuffle cards, I have to laugh a little bit because that is Magic Pros, their argument about playing paper magic and why MTG Arena is so boring. Remember, these are be people being paid $70,000 to play a game they find boring, almost like a job. But they complain about MTG Arena, they attack MTG Arena, and now it's become clear to me why they do so. They cannot shuffle cards. If you ask any Magic Pro, their number one reason of playing Paper Magic is to shuffle cards. Now what do we know about shuffling cards? Hmm, That is the most common cheat. You can shuffle your opponent's deck, stack land on top of their deck, hand it back to them, and your opponent cannot cut. I know a lot of people ask, why don't you just show, cut the deck, cut the deck? Well, what if I do it in reverse like Jerry Bertelli and you shuffle your deck, you hand it to me, I shuffle your deck a little bit, I look that there's land on the bottom, I put the land on top, I hand it back to you. You cannot cut your deck. Can you? I don't know. That might be a question for the very, very famous Saito who cheated by giving his opponents randomly cut decks, or presenting the deck, shuffling his deck for no reason, presenting the deck to his opponent, his opponent cuts the deck, and you are out of here, cheating opponent. Way to win, Saito. And he would win up to 50% of his high-tier matches using this cheat. This became known as the Saito cheat. That So if you played a game in Asia, Japan at the time, 99% of the time, if you spoke English, you're going to get the Saito cheat. All right, back into the argument I have. So Alex brings up a very good point. When you cheat, you win, because that's the whole point of cheating, right? Like, you wouldn't cheat to lose. I've never seen anyone make a mistake that has hurt them, right? So these magic pros always say, oh, I don't know that deck very well, yet you pilot, Sebastian, you don't know Delver, yet you piloted it, and you wrote multiple articles about the deck. And you won a championship with this deck that you didn't know very well. Huh, that's awesome. Not total fake, completely fake. When you are dealing with this level of cheat, it feeds on each other. It feeds and feeds and feeds until it grows to the point where Alex can cheat at a local Friday Night Magic tournament to win $15 of prize support and gets banned for life. I mean, that's how he was caught. He wasn't caught at a GP or Magic Fest because I would argue that even if he cheated at a Magic Fest, the judges would allow him to get away with it because he is Alex. And you don't want to create drama. MTG Arena doesn't have storylines. The problem with Paper Magic and why so many cheat people cheat and get away with it is Paula Victor Damarosa is regarded as a very nice individual. He's not regarded as a cheater. So that is his storyline. Alex Buccini is not regarded as a 
diligent individual. He's regarded as a cheater, and that is his storyline. From the very beginning of Magic, if you listen to Mero, the face of Magic, I would say that's very unfortunate, but he is all about storylines. He wanted to vote the greatest known cheater at the time, Mike Long, into the Hall of Fame because a Hall of Fame should tell the story of Magic. That is his words, not mine. And without Mike Long, you cannot tell the story of Magic, which is correct. So in Magic the Gathering, you have all these storylines, and all these judges have to go with these storylines. And these storylines can change at any moment. Look at Yuya Watanabe. Banned. Gone. Kicked out of the MPL and $70,000 over a cheat that really didn't affect his standing at all. Yet he still cheated. Then he went online to defend his cheat and then make accusations or subtle accusation that the judges like de-sleeve his deck and then re-sleeve them in the manner that would have the mind scaler and uh, the urzers. I mean, it, it just was bad. It was bad for Yuya. But you know what? He's going to get a redemption arc. We're, we are living in not a who is the best at Magic wins Magic. And I can prove this. Magic online players who have done very well online have done very poorly in paper. But they understand the mechanics better than anyone because the online mechanics, just like MTG Arena, if Erin Barberitz, the Star City Games champion, was playing MTG Arena, she, I, I, how, I don't know how she identifies. I'm going to assume it's a she does not win against Lyra. But in Paper Magic, there are times where you are way behind and you can still win. How? As Efro says, specifically, his love of magic is tied with shuffling the cards. Think about how crazy that statement is. That instead of playing a faster game of magic and having a more convenient time from your home, it's shuffling the cards and quote, the community of magic. Well, MTG Arena, Wizard of Coast makes all the money, right? In a ch tournament setting like Star City Games, Aaron puts in money, then all the other players, let's say 400 players put in money, and that's the community. The community, you know, a lot of people like Wedge say that they respect the community, but you don't respect it by asking for money all the time and not producing content. Dude, it's not that hard. Get medical insurance. You have enough money now. You still don't have it, do you? So... Respecting the community is, in my opinion, not asking for donations all the blanking time. Respecting the community is not cheating people for, quote, messy play when they all put money in. The issue for these Magic Pros is very simple. If there is no Paper Magic, there is no Star City Games Grinder events, there's no Magic Grand, they can't win. And in fact, if you win a game of MTG Arena, what do you really win? You just get like a few coins. These people need to cheat for a living. They need to steal for a living. And when MTG Arena threatens this way of life, Efro gets really mad. And surprisingly, Efro posted that, got lots of likes and attention for attacking MTG Arena, the thing paying him $70,000 a year. And then later it comes out that, oh yeah, by the way, streamer contracts are gone. Bye-bye, Efro. Streamer contracts are the worst thing I can imagine from Magic. Unless the streamer's name is PewDiePie or Pokemon or someone who's actually going to engage with their audience. No one wants to engage with, I mean, Saviz is an exception. No one wants to engage with Huey Jensen and Huey Jensen doesn't even know there's a chat function on Twitch. He spends two hours sighing and, oh, oh, oh. I mean, who the blank wants to watch that video? It's so bad that Channel Fireball had to take down his videos. Who the blank wants to watch a video about Owen making sexual remarks, right? No. He's so bad that he had to del delete his entire Twitch channel. This branding mechanic is not going to work because the people that you hired to stream and you paid $4.2 million, dollars 2.5 in fees, and then another $2 plus million and close to $2 million in advertisement and sponsorship and social postings. You are kidding me. You can't just take these magic players, antisocial, extremely mean, extremely, they're just douchebags. Like, 
You took the 32 deuce, 35, because three of them got suspended. You took the worst characteristics of individuals. Some of the worst, I mean, Owen, I mean, you're going to get worse than Owen and Yuya Watanabe? One's a cheater, and the other one has been accused of very, very bad things. These are the people you want to be promoting? These are the people you're going to pay to promote this game for us? A cheater and possibly a offender? A predator? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, why would you pay them anything? In fact, you should ban them from playing the game. You shouldn't pay them to continue to cheat. And that's my scenario. I mean, Yuya Watanabe, Ifro, all of them summarize the same core problem. Entertainment. If you want to grow magic as an esport, you need to find entertaining people and teach them magic. You don't find magic douchebags and teach them how to be entertainers. That is not going to work. You can't take the top 32 magic players, antisocial, very, very predatory in nature. I mean, that, if that's the best thing I can say about them, then that's the best thing I can say about them. And train them how to become Twitch streamers. None of them are going to break 100 viewers. That's just fact. You need to find the Pokemons and the Savizes, which I agree with, and his wife. Uh, or the, please not pro Jared. I mean, pro Jared is not good. I mean, he would have been good, but then something bad happened. You got to vet these individuals. So many people online would be a better streamer than Efro or Huey Jensen or Paula Damarosa. They exist and they want to actually promote magic because they're doing it for no money. When you put money in front of the Eric Froelich cart, he'll want it. He'll smack your MPL league. He'll say terrible things about you in MTG Arena and he'll take his money. That sounds very familiar, almost like a wedge-like individual we can think about who doesn't send out cards to his, his quote, patrons. Bye, guys.